Could we see a collapse of Levo Tobi Laki Laki and then a dangerous lateral eruption similar to Mount St. Helens? Look at this picture, guys. This is Mount St. Helens on May 18th, 1990, 80, 45 years ago. Richard Lusher took a spectacular photograph of the eruption of Mount St. Helens and it looks absolutely scary guys don't you think this monstrosity so he took this picture right in the moment as this massive ash cloud was rolling towards him and why am I saying this Levo Tobi Laki Laki if something like this happened there over 100,000 people under direct threat versus Mount St. Helens sparsely populated so this photographer had abandoned his Fort Pinto that you see in the picture and he jumped onto his, his motorcycle to escape and thankfully Lusher survived but his car did not as you can imagine. Such eruptions often produce pyroclastic flows. These are basically avalanches of highly heated gas, ash and rock debris that super super fast roll downhill. And they can reach speeds of over 100 to over 700 kilometers per hour and temperatures of over 400 degrees Celsius, well over 800 degrees Celsius, so way higher than your oven if you bake your pizza. So their enormous speed and heat make them virtually unstoppable, destroying everything in their path. They tear down forests, they destroy infrastructure and they burn or suffocate all living things in their path. And during the eruption of Mount St. Helens, the pyroclastic flows raced downhill at several hundred kilometers per hour, several hundred leveling large areas of forest, an impressive but also very deadly example of the power of these volcanic phenomena. And in this video, I will explain you why there is a risk for Levo Tobi Laki Laki in Indonesia to do the same. Mount Levo Tobi Laki Laki is currently erupting stronger than before, so it's kind of alarming. And Mount Levo Tobi in Indonesia could have something in common with Mount St. Helens on the west coast of the US in the state of Washington that blew its top off in the 1980s in a devastating eruption. So this sounds scary if they have something in common because while Levo Tobi is erupting right now, something could happen to Levo Tobi and we will talk about that today in this video, guys. I have reported about Levo Tobi and the huge ash clouds that it had just produced. High air traffic warning, but this is not what we want to talk about in this video. If you want to know about that eruption, check out my channel start page or I put it in the end screen as well. So imagine you're standing at the base of a mountain. The ground is starting to tremble beneath your feet. And suddenly a deafening roar erupts as a massive plume of ash and smoke shoots into the air. This is the raw power of a volcano, a force of nature that can reshape the earth and change lives in moments. I want to look into the story of Levo Tobi Laki Laki today, a volcano on Indonesia's Flores Island that has been making headlines with its recent activity. So could this volcano unleash an eruption as devastating as the famous Mount St. Helens explosion in 1980? And it's the anniversary of that iconic eruption of Mount St. Helens. Levo Tobi Laki Laki is one half of a twin volcano system on Flores Island in Indonesia. Its name <laughs> means husband in the local language and it pairs with its Levo Tobi Perempuan volcano or the wife. These volcanoes sit on the Pacific Ring of Fire. And by the way, the wife is taller than the husband. Um, Pacific Ring of Fire, you probably know that if you watch my channel on a regular basis, a hotspot for earthquakes and volcanic eruptions with 
heightened increased activity at the moment. And why is there so much activity? Tectonic plates are colliding. So Levotobi has a long history of activity with eruptions noted since the 19th century, but it's the recent events that have everyone talking. In November 2024, Levotobi Laki Laki unleashed explosive eruptions, sending ash clouds up to nine kilometers, yesterday up to 10 kilometers, and so like over five to six, seven miles up into the sky. And these eruptions have displaced thousands of people, just more had to be evacuated yesterday, caused several fatalities, unfortunately, and showing us how impactful a volcano can be. Geologically, Levotobi is a stratovolcano. It demonstrates the view, it's clearly visible. It's built from layers of lava and ash, from eruptions, right? It's building up. So stratovolcanoes by nature are known for their explosive eruptions like Mount Vesuvius, that's also a stratovolcano. So this explains why scientists are keeping a close eye on it after Levio Tobi ramped up its activity in 2025 and continues to ramp it up in 2025. So what does that have to do with Mount St. Helens? Well, let's have a look at the Mount St. Helens 1980 eruption. Let's travel across the Pacific from Levotobi to Mount St. Helens in Washington State in the US, not far from me. I recently drove by on I-5, Highway I-5, there was a sign going to Mount St. Helens National Park. It's pretty impressive where you can see the lava fields. So this Volcano unfortunately became a household name on May 18th, 1980, when it erupted in one of the most dramatic events of the 20th century. Before that big eruption, Mount St. Helens was restless, was showing signs. Earthquakes have rattled the area, steam vented from the summit as magma was pushing upward. And then there was an earthquake, magnitude 5.1, has triggered a massive landslide that has peeled away the complete north side of Mount St. Helens. And then what followed shortly after that was a lateral blast, like a sideways explosion of gas and ash and rocks that were shooting out there that have flattened forests and devastating anything within 230 square miles. That's huge. And the eruption column soared 15 miles, that's 20 kilometers into the atmosphere and was raining down as ash across multiple states. And the pyroclastic flows, that's superheated gas and ash, and lahars, mud flows coming from the volcano, have added to the destruction that this eruption has caused, has ended 57 people, and has completely reshaped the landscape. And it was rated as a VEI-5 eruption, that's the Volcanic Explosivity Index. So a powerful reminder of nature's force and it was a, an absolute turning point in volcanic science or for volcanic science. So how do Levotobi, Laki Laki and Mount St. Helens compare? How do they stack up? Let's break this down, guys. What are their similarities? They're both stratovolcanoes on subduction zones where one tectonic plate slides under another tectonic plate. That is creating magma that fuels explosive eruptions. That's why on the Pacific Ring of Fire, you see so many volcanoes and so many earthquakes because of these subduction zones. Further, they have both produced towering ash columns. Mount St. Helens hit 24 kilometers in 1980, Laki Laki 
almost 10 kilometers in 2025 right now. Their eruptions can be massive. Mount St. Helens 1980s blast was VEI-5. And Levotobi's recent activity might rank as VEI-4 or even 5 based on ash height, though exact data is still pending at the moment. What are the differences? Well, that's the location and the population. Mount St. Helens sits in a less populated part of the U.S., thankfully. But Levotobi Laki Laki is, is near densely populated areas, dense communities in Indonesia, and that is amplifying its human impact. What about their eruption style? Mount St. Helens had a dramatic lateral blast. That's a very rare feature. And Levotobi's eruptions have been more vertical, focusing on ash and gas. One of the most dramatic differences is that Mount St. Helens experienced a massive structural collapse. Its entire north flank gave way in a colossal landslide the largest in recorded history, before triggering that lateral blast. And this unique sequence turned an already dangerous eruption into a region-wide catastrophe. And Levo Tobi Laki Laki, here comes the dangerous part, while still structurally intact right now, is under close surveillance because Indonesian authorities have raised the alert level to level four, the highest possible level, due to, on the one side, the increasing seismicity, the ground swelling, the land rise, and these continuous ash emissions. So these are all signals that pressure is building up within the volcano and that we could see something more bigger, more big, more serious. And unlike Mount St. Helens, Levotovi has so far followed a more typical vertical eruption pattern, ejecting ash and gas into the high atmosphere. This is common for stratovolcanoes. This is normal in Indonesia and all over the world. But it, and it often results in this widespread ash fall, disrupted air traffic, serious respiratory hazards for nearby communities. But however, if magma continues to, to rise at Levotobi and destabilize the structure, especially under heavy rainfall or seismic shaking, both very possible and often occurring at this location, a flank collapse similar to Mount St. Helens cannot be ruled out. And this is, as I said, way more densely populated. Such a collapse would dramatically escalate the eruption's force, potentially triggering lateral blasts, pyroclastic flows, and massive lahars that could reach populated areas in just minutes. So in short, Levo Tobi Laki Lagi stands at a crossroads right now, either continuing with high column vertical explosions, or if it was destabilized, it could transition into a much more violent and unpredictable eruptions. That's why the volcanologists are watching it so closely right now, because all the shaking and the steam explosions could really de destabilize the cone, way more than volcanoes that have rare eruptions. And here's the critical difference in potential impact. Mount St. Helens erupted in a relatively remote part of Washington state with around few thousand people living in the broader area. And yes, tragically 57 people were lost, but in contrast, Levo Tobi Laki Laki is surrounded by densely populated villages with tens of thousands of residents living with only a 15 kilometer radius. So a major eruption here, especially one involving pyroclastic flows or lahars, could directly threaten way over 100,000 people. That's why early warnings and evacuations are so absolutely critical. How are they monitored? 
Well, the U.S. has advanced volcano monitoring systems that have especially been refined after the 1980s eruption. Indonesia monitors its volcanoes too. They have so many, but the resources are stretched thin across dozens of active sites. That's the problem. Look at this picture along Indonesia where all these volcanoes are. And both volcanoes pose serious hazards, but their contexts, geographic, social, and scientific shape how these risks play out. And that's the interesting part. May 18th, 2025 marks the 45 year anniversary of the Mount St. Helens eruption. And that anniversary isn't just a milestone. It's a moment to reflect on how far we've come in understanding volcanoes. Since 1980, volcanology has leaped forward. We now use satellites, seismic sensors, and gas detectors to spot warning signs like earthquakes or land rise, the, the ground swelling if magma is on its way to the surface. And of course, these tools help us to predict eruptions and saving lives. The Mount St. Helens disaster also has taught us about lahars, like mud flows, volcanic mud flows, and blast zones. Lessons taken away from that eruption were applied worldwide. So this anniversary that we're having right now honors the 57 lives that were lost, but also celebrates kind of the recovery of this region because this is now a living lab for scientists. But it's a call to stay prepared, especially for volcanoes like Levo Tobi Laki Laki. Both are on the opposite side of the Pacific Ocean. Mount St. Helens right now is a quieter volcano and is well studied. But Levo Tobi's current face is ongoing and less predictable. And we can say that Mount St. Helens has shaped the modern volcano science while Levo Tobi Laki Laki is a real time test of what scientists have learned. So what is the risk for Levo Tobi Laki Laki? It's recent eruptions that started basically in 2023 suggest it's in a very active phase with ash columns hinting at its significant power. And Indonesian authorities have raised the alerts and have evacuated thousands. And they show that they're taking it seriously, thankfully. So could it match Mount St. Helens 1980s scale? It's possible, though we can't say exactly when or how big the next eruption might be. And I will keep watching both for you. So you have to subscribe so that you're on the pulse with Silky about these volcanoes. I hope you liked this video. If you liked, if you did, please leave it a like and subscribe. Click the notification bell so that you never miss out on any new video and check the videos in the end screen. Interesting stuff for you guys. And if you further want to support the channel, check the links in the description of this video. Thank you so much, guys. I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.